Okay, it's September 11th and I have a little time to spend in the garden today. I just finished um, planting some lettuce seeds and preparing some soil cells for a couple other plants, which I'll show you. But uh, the garden is uh, surprisingly still very robust, seeing that we're coming up on the end of the summer here. Uh, the only plant that I've had to take out so far is the, well, plants, the cucumber plants. Uh, but yeah, I'll do a quick tour of some of the areas that are, are sunny right now. And I might come back out later today and film like the zinnias and a lot of garden bed too when the sun is hitting it and it looks a little nicer. Uh, but for right now, you can see the cucumber plants are gone. They ran their course and they served us well. Uh, the foxglove is looking absolutely stunning with all its green foliage and I'm very confident that it's going to successfully overwinter and then give us some beautiful blooms next spring. Um, my little fence garden. <laughs> always laugh when I come over here because it's it's a little bit of a disappointment it didn't really live up to my expectations but um, the lupines that are in the ground over here are supposed to come up every year so at least for a few years and I'm really hoping that they've established some healthy root systems and that even though winter's coming next spring I'm hoping to see them break ground and maybe even bloom, which would be fantastic. Um, this bed got disturbed a lot by all kinds of things, cats, apples falling, um, and it didn't get a lot of sunlight because the cucumber shaded it, so, uh, yeah. But there is one little tiny flower worth showing. <laughs> it's something, I suppose. And there's a couple other spindly cosmos buds that will bloom I'm sure but definitely not what I envisioned in any case I don't consider it a failure uh, it still might really surprise me next spring okay um, I think I'm gonna save garden bed too for when it's a little sunnier but still everything over there is looking really robust and healthy um, we're about to uh, harvest all of the onions. They didn't get nearly as big as they're supposed to, and that's probably my fault because I didn't amend the soil properly, but we'll have a bunch of little tiny ones just to give it some scale. There's my finger. You can see how small they are. The biggest one is over here, and that's actually, that's a nice size onion. Um, something that's been really exciting for me, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> I finally have some zucchinis uh, forming. Uh, this plant was, first of all, put in the ground stunted, and then it was shaded out by some other plants, and over the course of the summer I kept clearing things out and giving it more space, and once it started getting that direct sun, that it loves and needs, it really took off and it's exciting because a lot of people's zucchini plants are probably winding down whereas mine is just sort of ramping up and I don't know if the camera does it justice but this plant is huge. It's huge. <laughs> so next year I think I'll give it a whole side of this garden bed and dedicate a whole area to zucchini and uh, see what kind of luck we have. The green onions are great. Um, we've been harvesting those as needed and they've been delicious. And salads, just squeeze through here. Try to get a shot of the zucchini plant. Look how big it is. It's huge. Uh, the other day I had a chance to up pot my rosemary seedlings and 
this is the one that I didn't think I was going to keep, and I'm so glad I did, because the original rosemary, which started off looking so great, it just got root bound and it got hit with um, some powdery mildew and it struggled so I pruned a lot off of it and I put it in this huge pot along with this one but honestly this rosemary is darker in color and the leaves are a lot more healthy I'm sure you can see that um, so I'm really glad I kept it uh, always pays to grow more than one seed um, but I still have high hopes for this plant, and I think it'll rebound nicely. I've been spraying any plants with powdery mildew, including the zucchini plant, with just a simple solution of water and baking soda, and that kills the spores, and that's, that's great. Um, on the other side of the zucchini plant here, you can see there's another zucchini down there. There's three of them forming, and this morning, I hand pollinated that flower there, so we should have a fourth zucchini forming soon, <laughs> which is really exciting. Um, over in this corner, <clears throat> we also have the parsley, which is doing great. We've already harvested plenty off of that. It's so great to have that back in, back in the garden. A um, couple of the kale plants are still kicking over here, albeit they are a little spindly, um, but they're still kicking something really cool. If I can get back here, it's a little tight. This is the moonflower, and like mom said, if you let the bloom fall off, like here's a bloom that's just sort of like gone limp, eventually this flower falls off and then at the very top it starts forming this really cool, is that focusing? I don't think it is. Which is a shame because it's really cool. Um, anyway, that's the seed pod. I'm not getting it to focus, but it's all spiky and really cool looking. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> I find that so fascinating. These plants have been really cool to observe. Um, we just had a really beautiful bloom the other day. And uh, the other one is over here, which also had a bloom, and it's uh, going to seed again. So I'm going to let those seed, and I'll save those seeds, and then hopefully grow these again next year. They've been delightful. Um, our tomato plants are doing great. I just took a huge harvest the other day. There's probably another few that are due to be picked. And then we'll be winding down, but um, there are still quite a few. And uh, I definitely, I was touting how they don't ripen too quickly, but there's always a point <laughs> where you just have a lot of tomatoes. And I'm at that point right now. Um, but I've been eating them every day, fresh. And no complaints here. I absolutely adore them. But yeah. So the tomatoes are looking good. And this is the Shasta daisy plant. That used to be in the corner, but I moved it over here and did a hard prune on it. And I'm surprised it seems to have a lot of new green growth, but I mean these plants pretty much go dormant during the winter. And I don't think we'll see blooms on this again, but um, I'm glad to see that it's so healthy and looking so robust. So I'll be looking forward to daisies next spring when this blooms next year. Uh, other things in this corner. My shadow. <laughs> Here are my English daisy seeds. Seedlings. And they're doing well. I'm trying to determine which ones are English daisies and which ones might be weeds. But I think they're all English daisies. I'm starting to get a little suspicious of some of them. Um, in any case, I will uh, let them do their thing. They've been pretty slow growing. 
you can kind of see, can you kind of see on the inside of that seed pod? I don't know if that's focusing, but you can see that spiky seed pod starting on this moonflower here, and it's such a cool feature of these plants. This side of the Mexican sunflower is getting its sunlight and looking really nice, but I'll probably pick up the rest of this, um, this tour later this afternoon. Uh, one thing I can show real quick is my little seed operation here. I've got a couple seeds soaking. We've got Swiss chard, uh, spinach, red Russian kale, and dino kale. Actually, I think that's the dino kale and that's the red Russian. Um, in any case, I'm soaking them and then I'm going to plant them over here. I've already planted two trays of the um, butterhead lettuce. Um, yeah, I'll be coming back out to finish this later, and it's a little bit of a gamble planting seeds so late, but we have a pretty mild winter here, and if we get some sunny weather, um, I can't see why this wouldn't work. Um, and I'm planning to do another plastic cold frame this winter to protect any plants that I might want to overwinter, so that is the plan. And that was my stomach growling. Time to go have breakfast. Okay, it's later in the day. I had a delicious tomato basil onion omelet from the ingredients from the garden, which was really awesome. Uh, the sun is hitting garden bed number two now, and it's a good time to document all the plants. And um, I guess I'll just go straight in here to the cannabis, which is, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but it's budding up quite nicely. We are super excited about it. hard to get a good angle on the top, but the top has the biggest bud. And there's two stalks. Hopefully the camera did it justice. It's hard to zoom in on these buds, I have to say. I'll give it a try. I can't really tell. Maybe something a little closer. Yeah, it's really coming along. I would need a ladder to really zoom in on the buds at the top. This thing is a good almost two feet taller than me. I don't know if you can see that hummingbird over there. How lucky are we to be getting hummingbird footage on the garden tour? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. This is uh, maybe one of the most exciting things in the garden right now. But, you know, it's hard to pick because then you have flowers like this uh, Mexican sunflower still just pumping out the blooms. It's got a ton of buds everywhere. I just went through the other day and deadheaded quite a few. I've been keeping all of them. I'm going to see if I can zoom in on that hummingbird over there. Hard for me to tell if this camera is picking it up, but... <laughs> They're so cute. But yeah, back to the Mexican sunflower, which the hummingbirds love, by the way. It's really in its prime right now. It just keeps going and going with more buds. And it's a good, I would say, what is that? A good foot taller than me at this point. All 
all from one plant. Just spectacular. I don't know if this is the, uh, that's probably not the best angle because it's right in the sun, so we'll go the other way. Coming around the front, we've got our Cosmo patch, Cosmos. I never know if I'm saying that right, Cosmos, uh, plural. They are looking really beautiful right now and, um, and have been for the last few weeks. I was really excited to see. It's got these really robust buds at the top here that look like they're going to be really large flowers and I don't know if I'll be able to, I can't, I can't really reach it very well, but you can see that. It's uh, really cool. I didn't know that they did that. So this is my first year growing Cosmos and I'm just learning how the plant develops and it's really cool. It does need to be staked and I've, I've run some string around my bamboo to like hold, hold the patch up and it's working perfectly. Um, oh, the other day I was so happy. They say if you have a lot of bees to put out a little uh, water for them. So I put this little dish here and I just started doing that midsummer. And the other day, I actually saw a bee drinking from it. Um, you put the rocks in there so it's shallow, and they can just kind of inch in a little bit. But it worked. And next summer, I'll be sure to do it right from the get-go. And um, I wonder sometimes if the squirrels are drinking out of it, too, because in the morning, usually all the water's gone. Could just be evapor evaporation, but you never know. Um, the marigolds are really still producing tons of flowers. I don't know if I, I could zoom in. You can see all those um, buds that haven't bloomed yet. And in addition to all the blooms that are currently going on. They're wonderful. I love marigolds. I'm, I'm a convert. I'm always going to have them in my garden. Um, the kale is uh, a little spindly right now. This one on the end I think I might pull out, but these ones in the middle one, two, three, and four. They're, they're doing pretty well. The two on the ends are a little bit dicey. Um, they're not really producing a whole lot at the moment, um, but, but they're still giving us leaves every few days, which is nice. Um, the basil plants are looking awesome. I noticed earlier in the summer when it got really hot, they were, they were starting to flower, but I've just been pruning that off, and they've really, I mean, remained green and lush and they've been filling in and I couldn't be happier. I just ate some of this in my omelet and it was delicious. Um, over here, I just gave uh, the zinnias some water but typically in the heat of the afternoon these ones on the side slump over so I always know that this patch is ready for a drink um, but I'll just back up a little here. You know, the, the camera doesn't do it justice, but this patch, some of the tallest blooms are a good, I want to say, maybe three or four feet above my head. And I can't even see the flowers because <laughs> they're so high up. So it's pretty spectacular. Um, they're still producing new buds. And I've noticed as the zinnias go through the season, the buds are smaller. Um, and I did do a big deadheading of them, I don't know, a few days ago. So it'll help direct some of their energy into some of the new buds, but they're still beautiful as ever and still very robust, so. I mean, it's September 11th, so that's not bad. I'm sure they're gonna go, oh, just hold that thought, there's a, there's a How beautiful. Oh, I love these guys. Aren't those beautiful? <laughs> I think our neighbors put out a hummingbird feeder, so we have some resident hummingbirds that live in the area. 
quite a few actually and pretty much if you come out to the garden you're gonna see hummingbirds every time and um, they're quite fascinating to watch and beautiful all at the same time how lovely and there he goes over to the butterfly bush <laughs> he's making his rounds anyway that's the second half of the garden and back up a little bit here and it's still a place of beauty a place where I can come and sit and just unwind and a place I can tend tend to and really nurture and it's been wonderful I couldn't be happier to have this area and uh, oh I did finish from earlier the seedlings are all planted not seedlings but the seeds I should say so we'll hopefully have some lettuce different kinds of kale spinach and Swiss chard for the winter and spring of next year um, I get drawn right in <laughs> one last look this is garden bed number three. And maybe get a different vantage point. Some of the zinnias. hard as it is for me to hit end on the recording, I guess I'll wrap this one up, maybe with one final glimpse of the tomato patch. And on that note, I love you guys, and I'll talk to you soon.